Ever wonder about the radio system on the Titanic? Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to Hamshack TV. I'm your host, Josh, AA4WX. Appreciate you being here. Uh, today's video is brought to you by Ham Radio Prep and World Radio League, proud sponsors of the first annual Hamshack TV Ham Fest Tour. Next stop on the tour is next Saturday at the Sevier County Ham Fest in Sevier County, Tennessee. I hope to see you all there. But if you're looking to get your amateur radio license, check out my friends at hamradioprep.com. They've got the best licensing courses you can find. Go check it out, hamradioprep.com, and use my coupon code HAMSHACKTV for an extra 10% off their already great prices. So uh, I kind of got inspired to uh, make this video today. I attended a field trip with my daughter's school um, today at the Titanic uh, Museum Attraction in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. And uh, I've been there before, but it's been, oh, gosh, probably 10, 15, 20 years ago at this rate. So I figured it'd be a good opportunity to go back and uh, see what uh, see what's changed. I wish I could film for you guys, but unfortunately they do not allow filming in the Titanic Museum. However, you can take pictures. So got several pictures to share here. Uh, the goal of this video, though, is uh, once I share these pictures, we'll talk about the radio system on the Titanic because it got me wondering exactly what the setup was i've done some research don't know if it's accurate but we'll put it out there and uh, see what you guys think uh so this is just a little diorama of the titanic there's my daughter she's looking at it uh they show the path of the maiden voyage here along with the time stamps of uh where it was uh, plots on the map that kind of thing here you can see they're uh loading coal into the furnaces uh, experiencing the heat and the heaviness of the shovel, uh, how heavy that would have been. Here's the grand staircase, beautiful as always. And uh, you got the uh, the dome, I about called it a chandelier, but uh, it's a dome really. Uh, here we are on the bridge of the Titanic. You can see the navigation uh, tools right there along with the ship's steering wheel and uh, the uh, throttle control, transmission back and forth, that kind of thing. Um, then they had these uh, on-ship telephones. Um, don't really quite know how they operate, but that's how uh, the boiler room or the engine room would talk back to the ship, uh, the bridge, or uh, the crow's nest, how they would talk back to the bridge. Uh, so really cool stuff. Now, I wasn't able to sh uh, take a picture because it was just too dark, but beyond these windows in here, is an outdoor type environment it's not outdoors but it's supposed to simulate being outdoors or you can see some of the stars and stuff uh, there is a little trough there that you can experience uh, what the temperatures of the uh, water would have been like the night that the titanic sank april the 14th 16th 1912 i'll get into that in a minute but uh, i was able to survive about 30 seconds before i actually got into pain and my daughter beat me by one second she also got into pain doing it uh so it's pretty cool simulation uh this isn't the greatest um depiction of how to uh demonstration of uh, of uh of cw morse code however uh it's what they've got and unfortunately i wasn't able to snap a picture of the key However, you can kind of see it behind this, opa this uh, opacity uh, filter here. So there's a piece of paper, and the goal is just to uh, pound out SOS, uh, which is dit, 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 da, 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 dit, 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 I think, or it's da, 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 dit, 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 da, 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 one or the other. Um, I, don't, I don't know CW, so uh, forgive me on that, but you have a fake paddle here, and you're supposed to tap it out on the touchscreen. And... Uh, Matter of fact, here's a here's a chart. So it is dit 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 da 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 dit dit dit. Uh, that would be SOS. So uh, the interesting thing is in the movie Titanic, they did not transmit SOS. They transmitted CQD, which I interpret to be CQ distress. Uh, so it's interesting that the Titanic Museum wants you to do SOS. Maybe that's just because that's the common play. I don't know. Uh, but they've got uh, they've got some telegraphs here. Uh, hard to 
uh, understand what this says. Uh, uh, this is coordinates 56 degrees west, 180 degrees north, maybe. Saved by Carthathia, Carpathia. Um, the office delivered was MSC, 7.40 a.m. by whom sent. Uh, pretty cool stuff. Here's another one. Uh, this one's just too far gone to really read uh, to know what it says. And this is what the entire exhibit looks like. Um, you can see a picture of the, of the wireless room and all, all that kind of thing. Uh, so really cool stuff. Just give you a quick uh, finish off of the tour here. Here's a room after you leave that the last room that's got uh, the survivors and the uh, ones that perished. Uh, and they gave you a card when you entered uh, the museum and you took on the role of a certain person. And unfortunately, second time in a row I've died. Uh, first, ep or first time I went, I was John Jacob Astor. And unfortunately, the movie spoiled that for me because I knew he died on the Titanic. Uh, this time I was the son of the founder of Quaker Oaks, and I can't, Oates, and I don't remember his name, uh, but he unfortunately did not make it. He was a uh, uh, second-class passenger, I believe he was. And uh, my daughter, she survived. Uh, she got the role of a one-year-old uh, passenger, and, and of course uh, they survived. However, there were many children that did not uh, survive. And then uh, one of the final rooms you go into, this is an actual picture of the movie prop. This would have been uh, the piece of, uh, I don't know, it was a, a headboard or a door or a fireplace mantle or something like that, uh, that Kate Winslet's character, uh, Rose DeWitt Decatur, uh, was laying on. And Leonardo DiCaprio's character would have been in the water uh, on this end. This is the actual used piece of, uh, of uh, prop for, for the film. And then they've got this gigantic Lego uh, version of the Titanic. Um, and then here's a bigger view of that. You can see Leonardo DiCaprio's character again. This is the violin, the actual set uh, used violin from the movie uh, that uh, Mr. Hartley, uh, the famous violinist uh, who passed away on the Titanic, uh, he, he played this in the movie. And then... Uh, you know me as a film person. I've got all the Oscars here. Uh, eight, nine, ten. There's ten Oscars. Amazing. Um, here's a close-up of one of them. Best cinematography. Uh, and then uh, come back out. Here's the, my daughter on the staircase again. And then a couple of pictures outside. Uh, this one, she's out in front of the stern. And then uh, she's next to an anchor here. So... All this to be said, thank you for coming down memory lane with me. Let's talk about uh, the uh, tele uh, the telegraph program on the uh, Titanic. The Titanic was one of the most advanced ships of its time, and its wireless radio system played a crucial role in both its daily operations and its tragic final hours. The ship was equipped with the Marconi wireless telegraph system, one of the most powerful radio setups available in 1912. Uh, this system allowed for communications over fast distances, providing both commercial service for passengers and critical maritime messaging. At the heart of Titanic's radio system was a 5 kilowatt rotary spark gap transmitter uh, powered by the ship's electrical supply. This transmitter operated at the frequency around 500 kilohertz, commonly known as the maritime distress frequency. Messages were sent using Morse code, a series of dots and dashes that operators would key in manually. Of course, they'd use a key, a regular uh, straight key, I think is what they call that. Uh, the radio room, often referred to as the Marconi room, was located on the boat deck near the bridge and was staffed by two operators from the Marconi company. Their names were Jack Phillips and Mar or, excuse me, Harold Bride. The system relied on a 17.5 meter, 57 foot tall antenna strung between the Titanic's two masts. Uh, the, uh, this high placement allowed the ship to transmit messages over hundreds of miles under normal conditions, sometimes even further at night when the right atmospheric conditions were more favorable. Uh, also keep in mind, RF goes further over water, uh, so that, that, that helped them as well. The ship was also equipped with a core receiver, an early form of radio detector that worked 
by detecting radio waves and converting them into electrical signals that could be interpreted as Morse code. The Titanic's radio system was primarily used for commercial telegrams, sending messages from passengers to loved ones on shore. The demand for this service was high, and messages were often delayed due to volume of traffic. Because of this, distress messages from other ships were sometimes ignored or missed. On the night of April 14, 1912, Titanic struck an iceberg. At 12.15 a.m., Phillips and Bride began sending the distress, the, the distress call CQD, the widely used emergency signal at that time. Later, they also used SOS, a newer distress call uh, that was gaining popularity. Messages were sent uh, repeatedly, desperately trying to reach ships nearby. The RMS Carpathia, about 58 miles away, received the distress call and immediately set course for the Titanic. Other ships, like the Mount Temple and the Californian, also received the messages, but only the Carpathia made it in time to rescue survivors. The Californian, was the, or which, was the clo- which was closest, had unfortunately shut its radio down for the night with its radio operator off-duty. Phillips and Bride continued to work even as water entered the radio room. Phillips sent his final transmission around 2.17 a.m., just minutes before the ship disappeared beneath the waves. Bride survived, but Phillips perished. The tragedy, tragedy of the Titanic highlighted the importance of radio communications at seas. As a direct result, international laws were changed, requiring 24-hour radio watch on ships, standard use of SOS, and improved coordination among maritime wireless operators. Today, Titanic's radio system is remembered as a, both a marvel of early wireless technology and a tragic symbol of the ship's final moments. The messages sent that night remain some of the most haunting in history a testament to the bravery of the operators and the critical role of the of radio and maritime safety. So that's, uh, that's about it. Uh, we learned a lot in this article here about um, uh, what happened that night as far as uh, the uh, radio transmissions go and, uh, you know, what the rig was actually set up on. The one thing, everything here sounds plausible based off of, what I'm saying, I just wonder about the five kilowatt, five kilowatts, a lot of power, a lot of power. It's possible, I suppose, but, um, I don't know. You'd be the judge guys get in the comments. Let me know what you think. And, uh, let's have a discussion about the Titanic. It's, uh, it's definitely an intri- intriguing, di- um, discussion and, uh, would love to hear more of your thoughts. Guys, again, don't forget, if you are looking to get your amateur radio license, go to Ham Radio Prep, hamradioprep.com, and use my coupon code, HAMSHACKTV, for an additional 10% off their already uh, great prices that they offer. And uh, if you're also looking for a uh, a logging program, uh, World Radio League is fantastic. I want you to go check check them out. WorldRadioLeague.com is totally free. Go check them out. I think you're going to enjoy it. Great program. So guys, that's it. We will uh, see you all in the next video. Hope you have a great day and uh, we'll say seven threes. This is AA4WX WSCB 693.